Hello and welcome everyone. It is time for Jim Comics Top Picks for New Comic Book Day this upcoming Wednesday, July 24, 2019. And I didn't think I'd be saying that again this soon. <laughs> but, oh man, I, you know, I stepped away and with my full intention of working full time on my comic book. But, uh, well, and other things, obviously, I got life, but uh, I just, I couldn't do it. There's just too much comic goodness and info coming out. I just, I love talking comics, and I love my comics, so, man, I had to come back. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, I know, it was, I left kind of suddenly, and then uh, now I'm back kind of suddenly. So, hey, there you go, what are you going to do? I want to thank everybody that, uh, you know, they said, a lot of people sent me really best wishes on my comic, and I am still working, I don't worry, I haven't given up on that. I realize it's going to take me a long time whether I do these videos or not. So I'm just, I'm going to do the one video a week because I just, man, I love talking comics and chatting with people. I met a bunch of people in my comic store the other day and, uh, well, not my comic store, but the comic store I go to. And, uh, oh man, it's just, I'm going to be sitting down with some coffee with uh, Andrew and John in the coming weeks. And I met a uh, really cool guy. Actually, I'm going to give my comic shop shout out right now while I'm thinking about it because I'm rambling here. <laughs> I met uh, Vin the other day, so uh, he goes by the handle Vin's Uncun Uncanny Stash, and uh, he wanted me to give a shout out to his comic shop, which is Comic Traders, they're in Calgary, Alberta, looks like a wicked store, they got a ton of stuff in there, and uh, that's, I get, I'm going to, I get to Calgary every once in a while, so I'm going to, it's next problem, it's over for me, or it would be like a state in the U.S., uh, so I'm going to head over there one of these days and pop in and say hello and maybe hook up with Vin over there and, and do some comic shopping for the day. Looks like an awesome store with a ton of books and toys and pops and everything else. So Comic Traders in Calgary, Alberta is my shout out today. So there you go. Uh, let's get into some comics because that's why I'm back. <laughs> there's just, oh man, there's been so much stuff happening in the books the last week. And then the SDCC is going on, uh, well, it's Sunday today that I'm doing this video, so it's fit, it's wrapping up today. And there's just been a ton of stuff coming out of there. A lot of it, to me, has been um, confirmation of stuff that I've talked about and other people have talked about over the last few months. And I'll touch on some of it. I'm not going to cover, I'm not going to rehash it all, but there's been some really cool stuff coming out of there. So we'll get into what I'm looking at this week give you my top covers and my picks and then we'll talk some other books because there's a book that came well actually you know what I'm gonna re I'm gonna talk about a few of the books I got last week first because uh, I just want to I know I'm not doing haul videos but a couple all what I'm gonna do is at any time some of the big books come out I'll just talk about them anyways but got my Immortal Hulk number uh, 21 man that's such a good series and then of course General Fortean becomes um, a new abomination and then he puts on the abomination suit kind of thing at the end so that's really cool but I still think uh, Rick Jones is going to be able to morph between Rick Jones, almost like the Hulk between Rick Jones and Abomination, so that'll be kind of cool. Silver Surfer Black number two is out. Boy, this series is really good. If you're not buying this, you're missing out. It is really, I know the art is hard for some people to get their, wrap their head around, but uh, it looks like, um, I don't know, 1970s graffiti art or something, but it's really good, and it? it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff that happened in here. I mean, you get, you know, you see... The inside of Clintar, because that's a cage. We all we all kind of knew that. Donny Cates was talking about there's a big secret revealed in here, and I don't. I mean, we kind of the secret. They you know they say the secret is that we know Clintar is a cage. Well, we knew that before, so I don't know if that's really a secret. But you get your first appearance of the Void Knight, um, and those three sent world sentries are awoken by Null, and they're guarding the gates to his kingdom again. I think those are those three are. Uh, that issue number one is first appearance but anyways got my batman 75 yep i'm back on the batman wagon this actually was a good issue i hate to say it but well i don't hate to say it but they've been it's been bad for so long but this one was good and you got uh, gotham girl first appearance of her is kind of the new robin which is really cool got both covers i found a couple of the corners were popped on that but uh and the kind of the big one that uh uh this past week was captain marvel number eight um, I talked about this one a while ago when I, I, I in the time issue number 10 was touted as uh, first appearance I said man you better get on that with issue number eight because the the story arc starts with number eight and there's likely going to be a appearance and sure enough you got it so hope you got a copy of that and I hope you didn't have to pay more than cover for it I know some shops were jacking up the prices right off the bat which kind of pisses me off when they do that but anyways 
And then I want to talk about Blade Runner. Boy, this is one, if you didn't get this one, I highly recommend this one. And I'm going to, I'm going to ramble on for a second about this and tell you why. Um, well, Blade Runner initially when it came out in 82 was a fantastic movie. It's still one of my favorite movies of all time. And um, I mentioned that Michael Green is uh, the writer on this. And he was involved with the screenplay for Blade Runner 2049. Um, and it is canon for the Blade Runner universe, so that's important. And I don't know if you noticed on the cover of cover A, you got the shadow of the girl in the background. I'm going to put an image on the screen from the original Blade Runner, and that's, I don't know if it's just an homage to um, the original movie, or, because the original movie is set in 2019, so that's, that's what's really cool, is this is all canon for Blade Runner universe, and... Um, so yeah, I don't know if that is just uh, an homage to her or if they're implying that she is a replicant, which I think she probably is, because the original Blade Runner, Harrison Ford, if you if you do some research, um, it sounds like he was actually a uh, replicant, so yeah, you never know, but anyways, and he just didn't know it. But uh, why I'm saying you really should get this is Alcon Entertainment, which is a um, subsidiary of Warner Brothers. They bought the rights to Blade Runner back in 2011. So they got the rights to Blade Runner and they're allowed to do prequels and sequels to the, the movie. They can't do a remake of the movie though. And um, the interesting thing is that uh, Blade Runner, or um, Warner Brothers, they're a parent company of HBO Max, which launches in 2020. And they're going to want some content. And I would not be surprised with this being written by Michael Green and being canon that you're going to end up with um, a Blade Runner television show similar to uh, Watchmen and, um, you know, all the other in Westworld, all the other stuff coming out. So because they got the rights to, and the interesting thing is when they got the rights in 2011, it wasn't just for movies. It was for television and for movies. That's part of the contract. So... Yeah, that's one. I'm picking up extra copies of number one just because of that. Because I really suspect that this is going to be um, something big down the road. So if you haven't got it, I suggest you get that one. Because that, that is, it's a really good story too. Then there's a young girl in here who um, mom has kind of taken off with her. And her her dad is a super rich guy. And I don't know if the girl's going to be like a half human, half replicant. The first kind of of its of her kind sort of thing. So... She's obviously very important, but anyways, it's a really good story, and that one I think you should get if you don't have it. So, just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I was rambling on there, but yeah, with HBO Max or uh, Warner Brothers owning the, the rights to that, sorry, bumping the camera there, um, I really think that's a good one. That's going to go somewhere. So, uh, for my picks this week, I got DC, I'm going to start with them. Uh, oh, actually, sorry, I'm going to start with the image there. I only got one independent this week I'm looking at, and that's Little Bird number one. They got a fourth print coming out this week. Um, it's been a good series, man. That's been doing really well. And uh, from DC, you got Action Comics 1013, two covers for that one. And there's supposed to be a major event, Leviathan, um, some information revealed in here. And I wouldn't doubt that you're going to find out that uh, Leon is the mom of the Red Cloud. So, anyways, Action Comics 1013, definitely one I'm picking up this week. Well, and this next one, I've been waiting this for this one for a long time. It's Batman Curse of the White Knight number one from Sean Murphy. Loved the first Batman uh, White Knight series. It was an eight-issue series. And the cool thing with this is Sean Murphy, he only puts out two covers. So there's not like 20 different covers you have to choose from. Every issue, there's only two covers. So you can either... I get them all, all the way through if you only want to get one, whatever. But I highly recommend it because um, somewhere in this run, there will most likely be a new character showing up. Much like we had the Neo Joker in uh, the last one. Um, so yeah, and it's just, he's really good that he does the artist and the writer for this. So it's, uh, it's good stuff. Definitely recommend that one. Uh, Detective Comics 1008, two covers for that one. I don't really like the cover B. It's, uh, Mr. Freeze on the cover. I'm just going to get cover A, but I love Detective Comics and, um, that looks good. So it looks like, um, Lex Luthor, uh, cures, freeze his wife's disease. So we'll see what happens. That's it from DC, just the three titles from Marvel. I've got a bunch from them. Amazing Spider-Man 26, only two covers, and I love Spider-Man, so I have to buy it. Uh, I don't know that anything major is going to happen in it, but I'm definitely picking it up. Fearless number one comes out this week, and that's where you've got Captain Marvel, Storm, and Invisible Woman teaming up, so 
I'm going to pick up one of those. There's three covers for that. I don't know how that's going to, what that's going to be like, but I'm definitely picking it up. So, Guardians of the Galaxy number seven. Got a couple covers for that one. And this is supposed to be the start of that Death of Rocket story arc, so we'll see what happens. I can't see them killing off Rocket, though. I mean, that just doesn't make sense, but hey, whatever. <laughs> we'll see what happens. If he does die, he'll be coming back to life at some point, more than likely. Two covers for that one. Uh, History of Marvel Universe. I don't know about this one. I, I might pick up a cover, like one copy, cover A. There's a whole bunch of covers for this. I'm, I'll show some of them, but... Uh, it's one of those ones, I just don't know where this is going to go. Are they actually going to reveal anything interesting, or is it just going to be kind of a rehash of everything for new new readers? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But it might still be worth picking up, so I'll probably grab one. House of X number one is out, and again, there's a bazillion covers. Initially, I wasn't all that um, stoked on this, but um, I'll be showing the covers as I'm talking here. But uh, I was reading something from Hickman the other day, and he was talking how a lot of writers and um, are kind of reacting to what the movies are doing instead of just creating new new stories and stuff so it sounds like he's creating completely new story well i mean everybody's creating new stories but i mean he's he's not just kind of trying to fit his comics into the movie universe he's saying you know he's creating stuff that hopefully the movies will come back and use years from now so um i'm definitely picking this up and with the whole reboot of the x-men coming uh, we'll get into that in a second. You never know. So I, I'm definitely going to get this. And Hickman's a good writer, so definitely picking that up. Marvel Comics Presents number six. The second print is out this week. If you weren't able to get um, a copy of the first print, try to get the second print because that is out this week. And there is also the one for 25. And I don't like that cover. It's just, it, I don't know, it's just the page from the book, and I don't like it. But I'm getting, I'll get a couple copies of the um, just the regular cover for that one for sure. Good one to get. Um, Secret Warps Arach, uh, Arachnite, Arachnite number one annual, two covers for that one. That's out. And I like these Secret Warps because every issue has had a new character showing up in it. So it's been, it's, I recommend picking them up. So anyways, and the Spider-Man Life Story one and issues one and two, third print is out this week. And issue two is your first Black Goblin. So um, if you haven't got, uh, and the, and well, any copies of number two, try to get number th um, the third print. I think that character is going to be going somewhere. He's, it's funny that uh, he's got some legs, that one, I think, anyway. So, got a couple new titles out this week. You got Swordmaster number one, um, four covers for that one. I'm going to grab uh, a couple copies of cover A. I'm not going to go crazy on it. And then you've also got Valkyrie number one, which is launching this week. And there's a bunch of covers for that one as well. So I will probably grab a few of those. And then you've also got, last one from Marvel, you got Web of Venom Funeral Pyre. Pyre. And I think this is the last Web of Venom book, if I'm not mistaken, but um, last one I've seen for a while anyway. So definitely grabbing that because, man, I love all those books. That one's not written by Cates, but uh, they're still really good. So my top covers are Justice League Dark, number 13, cover B. It's a really nice Quintana cover. Um, now this one, I don't know if this is still available, Rejected uh, Dead Girl number one, it's the next um, issue of Rejected that's coming out. Black Cape Comics, who man, I love, they're, they're a really cool store. And I showed, um, I don't know if I have it here, I, th I got it here somewhere, but I just don't know what I did with it. I have the, uh, I'll put an image on the screen anyways, I had that Rejected number one, um, the last one. Unwilling with the Esteban Salinas cover. Holy cow, was that a gorgeous cover. And they only made a hundred of them. And the same with this. There's only a hundred issues um, available. Um, I think it's sold out because it just went for sale yesterday. I should have posted something on Instagram, uh, but I was busy working. So, uh, but boy, it looks really cool. And it's the next volume. So I, I got one, but I don't know if they're still available. You can check, but I, I'm pretty sure they're sold out. But I just had to show it because it's a gorgeous cover. Um, Web of Venom, Funeral Pyre, number, uh, cover C, it's a coax cover, man, that's nice, I really like that one, but I think that's a one for 25, I'm not 100% sure of that, I know it's a limited cover though, and then one I've never heard of before, it's at the end of your tether, number two, it just looks really cool, so I had to, uh, I had to, <laughs> I had to show that one, but anyways, my picks this week, I don't have a ton of them, there's nothing really screaming at me that it's going to be, uh, 
uh, you know, going up in price or anything. But ones that I'm really looking forward to are Batman Curse of the White Knight number one. Highly recommend that one. That series has been really good. And I suspect at some point they're good because uh, Sean Murphy, he's kind of, it's um, a lot of his characters are, they're kind of roughly based on the animated series in my mind, anyways. And a lot of people have been saying that. And I wouldn't doubt it at some point down the road they're going to do something with his, uh, with his story. So. Anyways, Batman Curse the White Knight, that is definitely a pick this week. Action Comics 1013, because you've got that, uh, supposedly there's um, something revealed in this to, with Vent Leviathan. I, I think it's got something to do with Leon and, and Red Cloud, but we'll see. House of X number one, I initially was not going to even pick this up, but the more I look into it, yeah, this looks really good, so I'm definitely grabbing that. And, and uh and I got two honorable mentions, Swordmaster number one and Valkyrie number one, just because there's two new titles being launched this week. So that is uh, all I got for books this week. And like I say, SDCC was out this week and a ton of stuff was announced. Um, uh, yeah, that's why I got some of these books in the background. You got 798 was your first full appearance of the Red Goblin. I know there's a lot of people that say, well, 794 to 96, Jim, he's got the Carnage Symbiote. Yes, he does, but it's Norman Osborn with the Carnage Symbiote. He's not the Red Goblin yet at that point. Um, and the reason for that is he didn't, uh, Carnage ended up getting rid of those nanobots out of his body or nanobites or whatever they were called. He couldn't become the Red Goblin until that happened, and that didn't happen until just before this book. So... 798 is your first full appearance of the Red Goblin. If you don't have a copy, highly suggest you get it because he's definitely coming back. I mean, we know we've we've known that for a long time. They're not going to put all that effort into a character, um, and they and Marvel tends to do that. They'll kind of launch a character and they don't hear everybody anything of him or her for you know a year, and then all of a sudden they're back, and that's what they, that's how they do it. So, um, and it was announced at SDCC that there's a Red Goblin one shot coming out in October image of that on the screen so if you haven't got uh 798 uh they they're pretty cheap i mean they they printed a ton of them so you should be able to find them fairly inexpensive um there's that one there's the regular cover and then i showed this one before it's also there's the one for 100 just the uh, virgin variant so if you can get that it's a really good one to get too so Anyways, and then also um, you had a new Watchmen trailer drop, and as suspected, looks like uh, Dr. Manhattan is going to be coming back, as I mentioned. So if you haven't got um, um, the Watchmen number one, boy, I suggest you get it, because <laughs> it's the price is just going to keep going up on it. And like I said, it's one of these series, you know, it's funny, because Watchmen was, um, it had kind of a cult following for a long time, but once this show makes it to HBO and you get eyeballs on it that have never been interested in it before, all of a sudden there's going to be a lot of interest in the comics. So if you haven't got it, I suggest you get it now before the show drops, because it's going to be really good. Um, and then you've got uh, Dead Rabbit, which is really cool. That was a really good series, as you know. They, there was some issues, legal issues with the bar having the name and stuff. But it looks like it's going to be relaunched again, but they're calling it Dead Eyes instead of Dead Rabbit. It's now Dead Eyes. And it sounds like they're going to reissue issue number one and two as a kind of like a, like a double-sized issue sort of thing to kind of relaunch it. And then they'll and then they'll keep going with issue three. At least that's what it sounds like. So I'm kind of I'm glad to see that because that was a really good uh, that was a really good series. And that's uh, if you've got uh, Dead Rabbit number one and two, which came out from Image. If you've got those, hang on to them because they're gonna they're gonna do well, especially with them uh, relaunching. So that's really good. And then also um, there's a Captain Marvel number eight second print coming out. Uh, oh shit, was that this week? Hang on one second. I gotta make sure. I think that was. Uh, Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, that doesn't come out for a bit, but if they're, just so you're aware, if you haven't pre-ordered it, um, talk to your shop about getting uh, a copy of the Captain Marvel number eight second print, because it looks like, I'm going to put an image on the screen, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the cover, and it looks, it'll be the, uh, so it'll be your first cover appearance of Star. Um, yeah, and the print runs were not super high. And the cool thing was, you know, for as a collector, issue six of Captain Marvel was thirty-one thousand three hundred. Seven was twenty-six thousand two hundred. So eight, probably in that twenty-six thousand range, I would think. So it's not a super high print run. And there's there's a couple covers for that one. So um, yeah, if you didn't get a copy of the first print, try to get the second print. That one is one you can talk to your um, your shop about. So. 
and ask them if they're getting it in. Um, just want to cover a few things that came out of SDCC. A lot of this, again, a lot of this is kind of just confirmation. Like Fantastic Four, they're saying is in pre is in production. And we knew, I mean, I mentioned a while ago, I mean, Kevin Feige came out and said that they're going to be one of the first movies um, in the next phase. So, I mean, yeah, that just only makes sense. And you knew, I mean, they're not going to go spend a boatload of money buying Fantastic Four and X-Men from Fox and then not do anything with them. There were people out there saying, oh, Fantastic Four is not coming for 10 years. Come on, give me a break, man. They're coming for sure. And, and if you got Fantastic Four 48, boy, hang on to that book. Because wouldn't that, I mean, I won't be surprised if Galactus is showing up. They also confirmed the Eternals, and so all those books, which we've been talking about, everybody's, myself and a lot of other people have been mentioning for a year, well, for the past year or so, those are all really good ones to get. Uh, more news on New Gods, which we've talked about, a lot of people have talked about, that's going to be really good. The X-Men are being, uh, they're doing a reboot of the X-Men, which big surprise there. The other, you know, they're going to want to introduce a whole bunch of new actors and everything. So that's going to be really good. And I talked about that Red Goblin one shot coming out. Um, also, um, oh damn, what the hell's the name of that book? Skyward or Sky, I'm sure I'll put an image of it on the screen. I talked about this one quite a while ago saying that, uh, man, you want to get this because it's kind of got TV or movie written all over. And sure enough, it got picked up as well. So really good one and then um, uh, what else do I want to talk about here uh, oh yeah I want to end on this so Spider-Man life story number three this is total spec <clears throat> and whether or not it is or not I just thought it was kind of cool so it's Spider-Man life story number three which I grabbed a copy of hold on oh yeah right here so this one here is a good one to get if you can get it because in that issue you learn that Spider-Man and MJ have two kids called Claire and Benjamin and we still don't know who Kindred is. And wouldn't it be funny, because Kindred is family and everything else, wouldn't it be funny if Kindred ends up being one of uh, the kids of, of Spider-Man and MJ? <laughs> and if it was, man, this book is going to be one you definitely want to have. So anyways, uh, I, just, I don't know. It's total, total absolute spec, but hey, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Somebody was talking to me about that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's really cool. It could be. And then, as you know, um, at the um, SDCC as well, or maybe you don't, I don't know, but, you know, it's been confirmed that um, we're going to have a new Captain America and everything. So there's a couple of really good books you want to get. Obviously, Captain America 25 and Captain America number one. Those are really good ones to get. Boy, there's just so much stuff coming out right now. And there's a ton of stuff I want to talk about, which I forgot to write down. And, as, you know, but anyways, I'll, like I say, uh, yeah, I'm back. And uh, I miss you all. And... Take care of your Well, that's all I got for you. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm back. And I'll try to do these once a week. I, I'm not going to be doing two. I just can't do two videos a week. But I miss talking comics so damn much. And uh, I love my comics, as a lot of you do as well. So this, movie, or this video is getting a little long, so I better shut her down here. But uh, I will talk to you later week. Take care, everyone. Bye for now. Happy hunting. And comics. Our new comic book day is the best day of the week. Bye for now.